All right, so it's 601. Call so we're going to call the select board meeting to order. Uh, Chris Jarvis is not going to be present tonight. So someone wants to nominate someone to be chair for the meeting. I'll make a motion that Dave Eddy be the chair for this evening's um, select board meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank Dave is in the hot seat tonight. Okay. Uh, first order is to approve the agenda. Do we have any additions, deletions, or? Yeah. So we need to add, um, we need to, you need to re-sign the promissory note for Mascoma. Same terms, same for the line of credit that hopefully we're not going to use, but there was, they hadn't sent the third page. So by the time they sent it and then we signed it, they saw the date on it. And then they said, we need you to re-sign the entire package. So what you'll do is you'll just make a motion for Chris Jarvis to sign because that's how they did all the documents. And I already asked him, he said he'd come in tomorrow and sign. So we'll have to add the Mascoma promissory note to here somewhere. Well, why can't we do that right now? Means how you told everybody what we need. You to could. Do. It's up to you, sir. Second. All oh, in second. favor? All right. So all right. <laughs> all right. There you go. We'll cross that right off the list. So that was the only addition I had, Dave. Okay. Motion to approve. So moved. Agenda. Favor. All in favor? Okay. Okay, first on our list, Lisa. Okay. So I'm Lisa Campbell. I am here representing the library tonight. And I watched the videos from December 11th and December 18th. And it sounds like you might have some questions. So I thought I'd come and just see if there's anything you'd like to ask. Uh, if I don't know the answer, I will find out and um, get back to you. But I just thought I would uh, be present and uh, answer any questions you might have. I did put your um, letter that Bennett, that nice letter that Bennett wrote, and then the back. I put that back in this okay. packet, too, just to kind of okay. refresh everybody's mind. All right. All right. <clears throat> Where is that? I gotta, I gotta refresh. I, I read it, but I've got to refresh what it says before I. I'm sorry, Dave. Ask. I'm having a hard time. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just asking the question of uh, three, so so that I can review that because I do have a question. Okay. I want, do I want to make sure that the question I have is not already already answered. So it looks okay. like this. If you want to borrow mine. <laughs> Okay, I believe, I believe we were asking when you were, we would had asked for a uh, more long range plan for fundraising. Mm -hmm. And well, we don't think we, I don't see it here. It's interesting you asked that question um, because I went back and I looked at the videotape from November 26, 2022. And we didn't actually didn't have a discussion about um sharing long-range planning not that we object to do that but it wasn't on my list to follow up on and i thought how did i miss that um so but we can certainly i can talk to you about what our plan is at the moment um so last year when we made the request um it was in part so that we could allow our investment account to uh we could keep you know from continually drawing off it we were drawing off about three thousand dollars a month, um, and then and and of course spinning down the investment account. So uh, the idea was that if the town was able to um, support, you know, some of our operating costs for a period of five, six, I don't know, depending on how the uh, you know how things grow in terms of financial investments. Um, that we could build that account up and then be more in a position to support ourselves. So that was the idea. And we are pulling together a strategic planning committee. Um, we did a lot of researching this year, trying to figure out if we needed to hire somebody to help um, uh, guide the process. 
And through our research, I found out that most libraries boards just do it on their own. So we're gonna go ahead and do that on our own. And um, it's taken a year for us to get there, but on January 28th uh, is our okay. first, 26th is our library board meeting and we're gonna start that process there. So. All right, thank you. Uh, but uh, but uh, it'd be nice to see that in writing, you know, you know, with some numbers and dates and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, the food shelves, they came through with a right. bunch of what they're going to do and how much and when, right? All that. Wherever it has, does it all. Obviously, they, they want a lot more money than you, right. but uh, well, they still they have they have a huge well. financial page. But right. anyway, it's something that we all can look at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, certainly, also, if anybody ever wants to look at numbers that we've got so far, um, you know, we certainly have budgets every year and that kind of thing, and those numbers are always available. If you come in the library, there's a book that says minutes on it, and it also contains the budget numbers that are presented at each meeting. Um, but yes, part of our strategic planning is about the financial future. Part of it is about what we want for our building, because when you're working on grants, it's helpful to be able to refer back to a strategic plan that says, you know, we want more efficient heating systems or we want to update our windows or whatever it is. Um, so that would all be a part of that, not only the finances, but the, the building issues. So anybody else nice. have any questions about? That's it's quite an undertaking, isn't it? Yeah. It it is. We've got yeah. other grants this year, but it's a, the hard part, as you know, is not always just getting the grants, but then following through and all yeah. the stuff you have to do after. So we're trying to be judicious about what we apply for. Sure. And just the strategic planning in general is yeah. is tough. The strategic planning in general is difficult. Right, so, exactly. So yeah. 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 We've been given some resources or loaned some resources from some local libraries and from the Vermont Department of Libraries. So we're going through that now to make sure that we're staying on track. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. And it'll be helpful for you for yourselves. I'm sorry. What they it'll be helpful for yourselves also. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's in print. Can you? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we have done some fundraising. I it, so we sent the appeal out to the town. We talked about that a year ago when we first came to you guys. Um, we got a ten thousand dollar grant from the American Library Association to fix our front step and add some better rampage on the back of the building. Um, we got and we applied for an award from um, Lawson's Liquids. They do a thing where you go into their place and they have a put it in the jar kind of thing. Oh, cool. And we got, so next April, um, we'll put some, we'll put an ad, we'll put a thing in the paper about it, but next April uh, we're going, hmm? This coming April, that's right. It's the way things are. Um, ourselves and the library in Barry are going to share the proceeds from a two-week time span in April. So we're pretty excited about that, and we'd like to use that, that to update our heating system. That's our current plan for that. Um, we got the, the what? The Cliff Grant, um, which wrapped up last June. So we got money for books, we got money for the school um, to get books. And then uh, we got the courier grant. So we got a grant to help pay for our courier for the interlibrary loan and for summer programming. Mm -hmm. So we're working on it. Getting there. That's, That's good. great. Um, so the grants side of things. Are you one, are you a nonprofit? We are an incorporated yes. nonprofit. So we, um, I just saw recently that Preservation Trust, I don't know if you're tapped into mm -mm. what they're doing, but um, you would probably qualify this with the building. Um, they do sort of historic preservation, mm -hmm. Vermont specific. They're a Vermont foundation. Okay. Um, and the reason I was asking about the nonprofit status is they just opened up a round of grants that you now don't have to exclusively be a nonprofit to qualify for. Okay. And they've expanded so one time some of the things that you hit with historic buildings in you know trying to get grant funding to yeah. upgrade them and upkeep them is 
it'll be so specific on like it has right. to be facade or it has to be for this and they opened it up in a way that it was really sort of refreshing to see so it's like oh now you not only Actually. don't have to be a nonprofit to qualify for the okay. grant but it also expanded what you could use the grant for in terms okay. of your facilities and infrastructure of the okay. building and they're really yes. specific about historic uh -huh. infrastructure but i'm just wondering okay. if they would be i can Preservation forward you trust yeah okay i'll look that um, up thank you That's and it was it, i think it's still open because i just saw the email okay. within the last week or so okay. um yeah I'll but look that might up. be a, thank you yeah a fruitful one to pursue. that's helpful yep um so uh it, and it, along that topic as far as the incorporated nonprofit, um we are not a municipal library chris was correct about that um, he said town library, but municipal library is what Vermont calls them. Um, but we are a public library because we get some town funding. And so um, that's, I just wanted to provide some clarity about that. So, um, we talked about how many people we had at the historic, the history talks this year, 123, 125, 125 people show up for um, the variety of historic talks. Kathy that fills all up. Yep. Um, and we had the children's events, the teddy bear picnic, the teddy bear sleepover. We have a book group who meets regularly. Santa came. <laughs> <laughs> and the Mother's Day tea is also always very popular. So, you know, community yeah, events. Nice. Oh, yep. We, um, we have a bunch of groups who use the library as a space to meet at. So, um, there's, I, you've probably noticed on the way by, we have somebody who's doing a game day. So they come and do that. Um, and we have a couple other book groups who meet there. There's a quilting group that meets there in the winter. And we have um, the Make It Better Foundation, which um, supports uh, children and families with osteosarcoma. And they write postcards and letters to kids who are in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, legislative breakfast. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we did a coin drop. We did do a coin drop. That was really nice. And we did some fundraising up on the uh, interstate at the rest area. We've done that twice now. So, and we'll do it again in the spring. Yeah. So, we're working. We're working. Oh, we're open on Saturday mornings now, too. Uh, volunteers staff it but nice. we're open on saturday morning okay. nine to eleven that's great good uh, so yep. i when you called i should have told you that we talked we asked about if someone was going to be you or ben or someone to speak you know on town meeting it's just like you guys have always done for warva they usually have someone who steps up and speaks but just so we can be clear and we have it in the minutes you, the library would like to be just incorporated as part of the budget in the future yes. and not be a separate article. That's what you would like. That to is see our in the preference. Future. Okay. Um, and when I went back and watched the Chiat town meeting video as well, because I was just trying to figure out, mm -hmm. track what we had said and what our yeah. interactions were. And um, uh, it sounded to me like Chris was thinking about that when he spoke mm -hmm. at town meeting last year. Yeah. It wasn't completely clear to me right. that that was his intention, but yeah. um, it sounded like that that was a thought. So yeah. yes, okay. we would indeed like to just yeah. be included as an appropriation. And, and the good and, thing is, even though you're separated out, it's not they didn't you know they didn't ask you to petition or anything like that. You just got automatically put on the warning. So Warva has been that way since I came. So I imagine you've always voted Warva kind of as its own item. You know, separately, maybe just have someone speak about it or something. You mean at, at town meeting? Yeah, we never had to speak at town meeting before last year. No, no, I mean Warva has Warva always spoken at town meeting? Like they're a separate article. I don't know how they ended up being a separate ar article. Have you always? Oh, White River Valley. Um, asking for twenty grand to ask for one hundred and twenty. That's when you made them. Yeah. I wasn't sure what the history was there. So to... what was the history? I didn't hear that. When they were only wanting around twenty thousand dollars, they didn't. They didn't do that but when they meet it in three years i think it was they went from that to asking for one hundred and twenty thousand. right and it's okay, okay. you got to provide for the financial and you got to put on your own your own okay item. all right thank you you couldn't well be, uh, i'm very grateful big. for the white river valley i'm doing so yeah. thank you for supporting yeah. them yeah. so so we'll just so now at least it's there and it's in the minutes that so next year when we come around to this again we'll right. all be on the same page and right. what your request is right so. right 
So thanks. Can I ask a question? You can. Okay. Um, they are yes. a separate article this year. This time, just because I don't know. Just like last year, they have. They're going to be exactly the same as last year. They have seventy five hundred in the budget, and their additional twenty seven thousand five hundred is separate article in the warning, exactly like it was last year. Yeah. Which we weren't expecting. That yeah. Was usually. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to comment too that the Forward Festival, as you know, is not asking for money this year because of generous donations and good fundraising and all the fun we have doing it. Um, so I would think that perhaps I would suggest that since the library is always building community and that's what the Forward Festival is all about, perhaps that money should be considered as going toward them, toward the library. Sure. Thank you. Well, I mean, I guess it kind of can. We already took, we put a zero where yours is, so the money just opened up into the budget. So I mean, I'm not sure. Yeah, they can consider that when they go to do the next, they work on the budget here in a little while. I'm just suggesting it doesn't have to be exact. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I'm suggesting that that's a good cost. Well, it certainly helped your your money out. Mm -hmm. So you would have been better off taking the money and giving it to the library. <laughs> <laughs> now they can put that money any place they want. <laughs> I don't think it works that way. <laughs> so, any other questions? Any other concerns? Good. Okay. I'm just a little confused. Okay. Uh, because you said it's not going to the the whole 35 or whatever it is that is wanted will still be part of the warning. It doesn't, it won't come under the human services right. budget because the human services budget itself no, it's is only, okay. It's okay. Local. Okay. So it'll still be on for a warning. Yeah. It's right now. It's just like last year. So under local appropriations in the right. budget, it says, Bethel Library, because I think we used to give them two, maybe 2,500, then it went to five, then 75 or something like that. So that part is under local appropriations, which is okay. in the group just above. And then the right. 27, five, yeah, is separate. Right. Okay. I right. just wanted to make sure that you I was clear saying. about that because I know the, the human services budget alone is only 30,000. And I was calling them human services. I think I misspoke because to me, it, and then I realized, okay, no, that's local appropriations. There's a little header difference. I'm not oh. sure why, right. but. So yeah, so nope, they're still in there. Okay. And later, so my families when I'm meeting with them at school, if you leave here and you have a question, email me, call me, stop by the library, whatever, you know, we're happy to be, we're just be as open and straightforward as we can be. And if we don't know the answer, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah? You can come to the board meeting if you want. Yeah. Part of the municipality are not technically like your own commission, but are your board meetings on the town's web page as part of the community events? And they haven't been, but they could be. Yeah. Be worth yep. putting them on there just so yep. people know sure. when you're meeting and can be more informed. Absolutely. We do one. If it, I don't know, we'll just, how does that work for the town? If you just send it to Kelly. She can. If if you always meet the same like. If you always meet the first Thursday of the month, if you just, or, or whenever you meet, if it's a yeah. set time, just tell Kelly and she can set it on the community calendar. Okay. And it'll just say, I have a little star if they click on that date and it'll just say, you know, Bethel Library meeting at 6 p.m. Right. or 7 or right. 10 or whatever time you meet. Okay. So. Kind of like the legislative breakfast this mm -hmm. morning had the little star on there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Our annual meeting is yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a, yeah. Yeah. That's the only one we really yeah. It's on a personal it's quarterly. note, it's quarterly. Yeah, on a personal note, if you need, if you need anything while you're doing your strategic, you know, like help with a spreadsheet or anything like that, you know, let me know. I'm happy to, if I can, I'm happy to help. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, just let yeah me I appreciate the offer. Yeah. yeah. Let me know. Okay. She's pretty Thanks. good at finance. Yeah. Got yeah. A well, yeah. Of experience. Yeah. Well, you know, if you need help, like setting up a spreadsheet or doing something like that, I'm sure that then it's probably like super technical savvy. But if you but and it's been great about that. Yeah. And honestly, it's been awesome to have him because yeah. he brings that experience for nonprofits with yeah. him. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, if you but, need something, just holler. I'm happy. Yeah. To it's nice to know. Thank you very yeah. much. Awesome. Yep. Great. He brought, he brought a very nice cake today, too. He what? He brought a very nice cake. Ooh, he is a good baker. Yeah. <laughs> and good tea. He brings good tea with him. <laughs> right? Go Thank you. All right. Um, 
guess we'll open up for public comment, things that are not on the agenda. Ellie? Hey, thank you. Many of you may be aware that every fall I attend the select board meetings when the draft budget figures are being discussed. I had planned to attend the December 18th meeting. However, because of rain that day, I had water in my basement that needed to be taken care of. However, I did watch the December 11th and December 18th meetings on Orca. I was surprised and disappointed concerning your discussions about the recreation com committee, especially because there was not any committee member present here to provide you with any feedback or representation of what we do. Thus, I am here to make a public comment. I feel that I can give you necessary background and information to clear up any misinformation that was spoken at those previous meetings. In the spring of 2010, I was asked to be on a new forming recreation committee. The previous recreation committee had folded some time ago. Upon joining the new committee, I was told that the committee operated from April to the end of August. It was to interview applicants for lifeguards, hold swimming lesson signups, and hold an open house at the beginning of the swimming season. The new group that formed on, in 2010 started looking at the recreation center in a different perspective. It felt that maintenance at the center had been lacking. It felt that there could be other functions and programs at the center that would attract families to Bethlehem. The first week of August 2011, the committee and select board members met at the center. It was agreed that a master plan for improvements were needed. The town had already voted at the previous town meeting in March 2011 to start an improvement fund. The committee um, um, was given the task to work on a master plan. So we did a survey. We hired BIA out of Middlebury to draw up three designs for us to present to the voters at town meeting 2013. That original survey has only been used as a guideline. We have never used that survey as a must do. The survey showed us that bike paths was the number one thing people wanted. Number two on this survey was a new pool house and ice rink, ice skating rink. So the administration and committee got together, started working on the new pool house. This is the back, this is the pool house, 40%, 40, 40.9%. Um, so the, the administration and committee started working on a new pool house. We met with BIA monthly, but then all of a sudden we had a new town manager. All of a sudden we were excluded from the pool house construction meeting. This happened even though the committee had three construction people on it willing to help. We had Lucian Hankel, Mark Cook, and Corey Sturz. The construction of the new pool house was poorly managed. The company doing the work was given no timelines or oversight. It was finally completed in July 2016 with major flaws that one of them being no drains in the bathrooms. Now everybody knows that you need drains in a, in a shower bathroom. Um, a lousy office floor that has been remodeled. A pump and chlorine room that needs to be changed. Now Denise, you mentioned volleyball at, at the, our original group had an avid volleyball person in, on the committee. We had plans for volleyball. However, Keith and Abby constructed the parking lot wrong, not by the design, and put the lampposts in the wrong places. That action wrecked our plans for volleyball. Committees only are relying on volunteers. We rely on volunteers. 
Though we had setbacks from the Arnold Ireland administration, the committee sought ways to press on. Hiking trails were a top voter. Hiking trail 34.1 was a top getter. Plus, we had interest in skateboarding. Corey Stern set up a design workshop with Spawn Ranch. At that workshop, we discovered hikers, we discovered skateboarders. Thatcher Henley and Shane Kinsley joined our committee. Chris Forbes joined the Conservation Committee. We now had the volunteers we needed. So where are we going to get the money? So Thatcher Henley worked on grants to share, and Corey worked on getting a Tony Hawk grant. Now, we needed more money. On a Monday in March 2016, I was talking to Ashley Lincoln from Gifford about money they give out. She told me that the Marco Foundation was about to give out money. She told me that I had to, all I had to do was have the administration send her a request for money for recreation, and it had to be to her by Friday. I called Abby Sherman. She told me that she could not do that without select board okaying, and they were not meeting until Monday. I called Carl Russell. He told me no. I called Ashley back and told her why I could not apply. Well, in April, I was in the town library, and guess what? Lisa Hill told me, congratulations, the Marshall <laughs> Foundation has given you money. A friend told me that he read about the Turin Foundation giving money to skateboard parks. So I applied. Unfortunately, COVID came and their money source had dried up. Then things changed and the Turan Foundation was able to make money grants again. I called this administration, Therese, about replying. I was told no, because they felt the Turan Foundation did not support skateboard parks. A few weeks later, I got a, call, a phone call from the Turan Foundation. The person on the phone said, could you use um, $15,000? I said yes. When Greg Maggard was town manager, we had an opportunity to apply for 50000 from the Land Water Conservation Fund because we had a matching 50000 from the voters to use as the match. The procedure for the grant is a written application and an interview. We got turned down. So I followed up on finding out why we got turned down. I was told that our town manager, Greg Hatter, had submitted an incomplete and sloppy application. And also that at the interview, he seemed to imply that Bethel did not really need or want a skate park. Have you ever read the book, The Little Engine That Could to Your Children? Our committee is the little engine that was trying to go over the mountain. We have worked with four town managers. We have worked with a variety of select board members. We have been given roadblocks, detours, had to jump through a hoop and been told no. Yet as that little engine traveling over the mountain, it kept going saying, I think I can, I think I can. Well, we as a committee have kept chugging along. The committee doesn't feel we need a new survey to tell us what people want. The reason being that the committee has been listening to the families who use the center. When they told us that they didn't want a skate park blocking their sledding hill, we moved the location of the skate park. They told us that they wanted the field safe. So we, we made sure that we got permits for the items in different places so that we could save the field for the families that um, went came to us. Now, the survey said that 35.2% that, that of people want a community center, a team center. It's number five on our survey. Um, now, Owen from Bates, Leonard Me, and I met several times in 2022. Owen and I have looked at two buildings as a possible community. 
uh, community center. And I have looked at a third bill, building. We also started looking into ways to go about financially doing it. At the town meeting community dinner last November, we just had it a couple months ago, Lisa McCoy stood up and said, we need a community center. I have a group of men that want tennis courts. I have a group of seniors that want pickleball courts. Farron Griffin came to our December meeting and we talked about a baseball basketball court at the school or at the center. We've also gotten permit, uh, permit design for a basketball court at the center. I am also have been corresponding with Barnard Recreation. They recently have a new basketball court, a new tennis court, and a new pickleball court. Your survey is not going to tell us anything new because we've been listening to the families. We've been looking, listening to what they want and what changes um, we need to make to meet the, their needs. When you are talking to these people that say, say that, you're that you were talking about at the December 11th or December a meeting that I watched, are you talking about all the positive things we've done? Do you point out that we have a pavilion and ice cream with no vegetables to the taxpayer? Do you point out that we stay the old swing set and make a beautiful new place on our area? Do you ask them if they use the free picnic table and the free grill for an evening with their families? Do you ask them how often they hike the trails or use the center? How how, have they attended a recreation committee meeting? Baron Griffin came, people come to her. Are they coming to our committee meetings and telling us, do they want to volunteer to help with anything related to the center? Remember, we are volunteers. We are limited to what interest, time, and energy we have to spend on projects. We are not town employees. Where is the positive vibes from you guys? And look, we have tennis courts at 30%, basketball courts at 29%, volleyball at 19%, skateboard park was only 11%, but we had the volunteers that were willing to put the workers in. If we have somebody that's willing to put the worker in for basketball, like Baron Griffin came to us, we're starting to work on that. We will do what people want to help us with and what they tell us they want. Well, thank you, Allie, for bringing that to our attention. <laughs> now that survey is carried to show those from the 2011 or 12 survey. Yes, it is. But as I said, the families have been coming to us over the years. The, the, and as I said, they have been telling us from time to time, from 2013 to now, they come and tell us. Uh, we, we didn't start working until, because the pool house was first. So they came, you know, in, in 2015 to say, we don't, when we started working on skate park, we don't want the skate park blocking our the sledding hill. So we moved it. We have been coming to us and saying, okay, like Baron Griffin, he wants, he's trying to figure out about a basketball court at the school or at the center. Mm -hmm. When when we when we got when we get when we had to go before the DRB, we've been twice before the DRB. We listened to people. Say we want you to design it in a different place. So we have the back the design. I don't have that, but we have the design for them. You know, in in, in where people say we want you know whatever. So we do. We have been listening, and and like like this is twenty twenty three. Very neat. Um, in twenty twenty two. Owen and Leonard came about a community center. Um, 
um, in, in 2020. People came about um, what, when we started doing the kickflip um, workshops. People that attended, their grandparents are bringing their kids to those every summer. We've had three summers. And as they're, we're talking, as their kids are skateboarding, they're saying, when are you gonna do pickleball? They want pickleball courts. So I, I have the phone numbers. I have the numbers of the people that want pickleball. And I have the phone numbers and emails of the three gentlemen that want tennis courts. So I have people that I can follow up on and, and you know, whatever. So I'm thinking what you're talking about is what was discussed at the last two meetings, right. the little survey about tennis, pickleball. Right. Right. And I, if I correct me, anybody, if I'm wrong, I believe that came about because the survey that part of the master plan, because I've been reading the meeting minutes from the, from the rec committee and the importance of tennis and pickleball and the master plan, which I believe the master plan is from 2012 or 2013, right. um, is to update that because not everybody goes to the rec committee meetings, not everybody goes there. This here will be more town-wide because like you said just a few minutes ago, 11% was the percentage of people that wanted the skateboard park. And we, the town has since, well, recently this past year it was what, 36, 37,000? For the whole, for the rest of the part. Yeah, for part two. Fun to do that. And when you're saying that you, the master plan, that master plan has changed. That master plan. Okay, I'm just going by what you have, Ellie, right. reading your minutes. Right. And the in, in the minutes, it says it was in 2013 because the skateboard park design was blocking the sledding hill. Right. Because so, I'm just going by your meeting minutes. It says Ellie gave a background history of how the master plan for the recreation center came about. She and others discussed the progress that has transpired, which you just did for us since 2013. Um, and the group also discussed, and this is the word that got me, the importance of having tennis and pickleball courts. So to me that this is just me saying that the group discussed the importance of the tennis and pickleball like nothing else is going to come forward. Well, that's why Farron Farron and Farron asked about the the basketball and yeah, and you referred him to the Barnard Rec um committee and as we all know there's a big difference between the monies that Barnard has to spend and what Bethel has to spend. They can have tennis courts, they can have pickleball because they have the people and the tax base and whatever it takes to get those. Barnard and, and Bethel is like comparing Bethel to Burlington. We just don't have the same equity that they do. But I believe that this new one page survey is for all the residents of Bethel to have a say in what goes on. Cause like, you know, not everybody goes to committee meetings. We don't always well, have that many. I know. And there's not always a whole bunch of people here. I'm on several committees over the years and people show up just at certain points of time. Um, but I believe that it would be for the, as what's written as that draft page is to put it out so that the whole town can put their share, their say what they want, not just a couple people that go to a meeting and say, I want a tennis court, I want a pickleball court. Recreation committee, recreation should be for everyone, not just the people that skateboard or and, play tennis. And, and that's what we've always done. We Right. We've and made, so for me, I don't it, see. We made it for ice skaters. We made it for hikers. We made it for yep. um, kids with the playground, with the uh, handicapped sidewalk to the playground. We have been making it for all kinds of people. We've made it 
with our free grills and picnic tables. So, uh, so people can have a picnic there. Right. We've made it to, for pavilions. I hear, not, saying, I hear what you're saying, Ellis. I hear what you're saying. We've mm -hmm. opened it up to all kinds of people. Okay. Yes. I don't I guess what all I'm hearing, I still haven't heard what the objection is to having a new survey. It's a new survey. That's all, it, that's all we're asking for is just to do another survey. It's because you're not, not acknowledging all the things we have done without... We're not not acknowledging that from what I can see. I was going to say, I don't think I, that's... I don't know. I'm hearing something very different than just the survey. I'm hearing how we as a select board use or don't use, respect or don't respect town committees to do our work. It feels like mm -hmm. that's an emotional thing, not... This is not necessarily reason didn't put it there, but it feels not from what I heard Ellie say, it feels like we're not relying on the work that the rec committee has been doing for years, which from my perspective, has they have had their ear to the ground better than probably any other committee in town, number one. But we also heard that last week, or last meeting, with regard to another committee that has been doing two years worth of work. And then when it got to the select board, was met with um, disrespect for the work that they had been doing. And they felt that. And I, and, and We did not have any input on what kind of question he would ask, what kind of, um, what kind of survey it would be, or what kind of questions you would be asked. We had no representation or input in what, what the, that is coming up and what and so do you respect us as a committee a committee if you're not at, even letting us be representatives or not asking us what kind of questions would you like them? Well if we are disrespecting you, I apologize as as tonight's chair <laughs> for the select board because that is definitely not our intent. I know we have had several conversations about the good things going on at the rec center. Oh, well, thank you. I hope it, um, you just haven't heard it lately. Well, uh, you, again, not everybody makes it to every meeting except for us. And we don't always make it. <laughs> we try. So I don't, there, I don't believe there's any disrespect uh, mm -hmm. intended. Um, we have a lot of things, a lot of balls to juggle. And if we have uh, missed that, again, I apologize. But I'll go back to the same question I just asked. Would you have any objection to a uh, survey? And uh, it's not set in stone, so I'll ask you right now. Would you like to put some questions on it? Our yes. If there are, I asked the committee what they suggested in the minutes. Um, Denise, you can read what we suggested for, for questions. Because I asked our committee. I get I get the feedback from the committee. I don't just change things without feedback from the committee. Something is whatever they have a right to have input. It's not me just saying saying what's what. So we came out with three points. Well, I just I think I want to reiterate because it, it was said, but I think I want to reiterate. I think the board does recognize how much the rec committee does. I think as a committee in our town, you're one of the most active. You do a ton of fundraising. You do a ton of community events and initiatives. Like none of that is lost, and I I feel bad that you and your committee feel that way. That I I don't think it is lost on us, but we're clearly not doing a good enough job of giving you the credit for 
all the things you are doing. And I think sometimes when it gets to board meetings, we're looking at hard numbers and making hard decisions on a bigger scope for the town. And we forget to do some of the niceties and the like, hey, thank you. This was great. You know, and I think like Paul does a great job of kind of reminding us of that, of like, hey, say say the thank yous when when they're there, because it is easy to just move on to the next subject matter. And then it makes the volunteers and the committee members feel like, well, what did, what did we put all that energy in for if we're not even appreciated for it? And so I, I hope that you you do see that in the long run, we really do see how much your committee and you especially do, and we do appreciate it. You, you've pushed hard and you've made a lot of stuff happen in the town. We're unfortunately down to only four members right now. So, <laughs> there so we can make some edit. What for for Ellie said that they talked about what kind of questions they would want. I don't see any in the last. Um, are they from the last meeting? Or uh, the, uh, the minutes I have are from the December 6th meeting when Baron Griffin came to talk about basketball. That's the meeting. Um, we should have them. Um, um, I got the January meeting is yesterday. No, no, it was Sunday. But, uh, but we have. I don't see him in here. Uh, oh, Kelly's have... been out too. So it's oh, hugely. Oh, all I see for the. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. That's all I can see. see. Yeah, y'all. Yeah, because yeah. all you have for December six is call to order, roll call, ice rink, okay. recreation well, budget, budget. If you want to other send budget, me business questions, plan, then yeah. then, yeah. then if you send me what the questions you want, we can rework this. Okay. It's only a draft, so okay. send me what you want. All right. We could all send it back. What, what uh, questions you? Come it's up it's with? in the package. It's in the yeah. package. It just it's been says in the package last two. All it says. What would you like to see as the next recreation activity slash opportunity at the Bethel Recreation Area? Now this skate park is built. Okay. A A tennis court, B pickleball court, C multi sport court surface. In parentheses, it's like basketball, tennis, pickleball, volleyball, badminton. A D a floodable rink for ice skating, hockey, basketball, etc. Or other. But if you send <laughs> send whatever you want, I'll, okay, I can. Yeah, it's it's the deal. Third, it was. There's oh. no minutes. Oh, I was sorry. looking at the December 6th. There's oh, nothing on this. Sorry. I, oh, and that's fine. It, no, no, no. Kelly, she, she's not there. She wasn't in today. So, oh. But if you just send them to me, oh. I, what I'll do is I can incorporate it here and then send it back to you as a draft and you can make some edits. The select board can approve it at the next meeting. Thank you. I no, no problem. So we'll can I skip that. So I definitely think it's time for another survey. Did that one many years ago. People move, people come. But when you get your first percentages off there. Yeah. So the skate park had eleven percent. Yeah, they had what had did the basketball court have? The basketball courts had twenty nine percent and the tennis had thirty point one. Okay. I guess I'm kind of leaning toward how did we get a skateboard park with eleven percent? Oh instead of talking about yeah good question because the, the people that volunteered to be on the committee wanted to work on skateboard. We didn't have anybody that was willing to join our committee to work on that. And we didn't, we didn't have any resources or fund, fund, any opportunities to fundraise about basketball. Nobody had any organizations that would give us money for basketball. I guess where I'm going at with it is, if we're listening to our people, we go to the basketball court and do that, that had the most numbers, then a skateboard park. It's done. I know there's people that like the skateboard part, but I'm just thinking that's not how the rest of our people. Yeah. I'm going to get okay. some information to Therese and she'll incorporate it in what we already have. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other pub public comment? Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, Deborah. Mm -hmm. Van request to be appointed to the Bethel Rec Committee. So, All those in favor? Aye. Or any discussion? Aye. That was simple. <laughs> you have another member now. All right. Um, ben Rogers, next. 
and Charlotte Danforth request to put 226 Graham Street on water vacancy rate as the water is shut off. That's usually the standard pre ordinance is that the water's off and their house is apparently it's on the market. So, and they understand. Yep, it's yep. A, it's not a full abatement. It's right, exactly. Yeah. They understand it's a vacancy Great. rate. So, yeah, I so this, you, you're good at your job. Well, I didn't talk about this <laughs> one. To Somebody else, I think it was Pam who talked to them okay. and then. Yeah. And then maybe Dietrich, or no, not Dietrich, she was on vacation, so Pam. But anyways, yeah, so they understand the situation that it'll be just a lesser rate. But so you would be doing this as the water commissioners that it, that's falls under your purview switch then. Hat. Switch switch hats, yep. Yep, so that would be effective 1-1. One, one. Entertain a motion. Move to um, put Ben Rogers and Charlotte Danforth on a vacancy rate for their 226 Graham Street property. Do I hear a second? Thanks. Any more discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Therese, just for um, clarity, if the property sells, that automatically reverts back to now it's full yep. open. It's yep. not vacant. Unless, I mean, if somebody bought it and left it vacant, then. But would they, I guess that's what I'm asking is, would that new owner just retain the vacancy rate status or would they have to come back to the select board to if request If we caught that? it, we would ask them to come okay. back in. And the chances are if someone buys it, they're going to move into it, but unless they've yeah. bought it now. I don't even think it's plowed there right now. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. So um, that's but it's something that we, usually it comes up because when we get the PTTR, the property transfer tax return, D-Tree changes, so she'll see what rate they're right. on. So then it kind of usually jars us to take care yeah. of it and they'll want their water turned back on yes they don't <laughs> they will. if they're gonna live i like to think yeah. so maybe they don't <laughs> all righty now we'll get on to the fun stuff uh discussion of the fy 24 25 fiscal year budget and in the packet i believe um there's information about edits you've made since last yep. meeting yep well then we just talk that we just sent <laughs> yeah <laughs> Let's consider that. <laughs> yeah, I think we covered that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so um, obviously Chris Jarvis couldn't make it. He came into the office and we met and he we talked about and I think I outlined that in the in my report that the changes that we made were. Um. So we added um. $10,000 more to the high, highway rehabilitation and $10,000 to highway equipment, both of which are capital funds, so they don't have to be spent by June 30th. Um, also added a couple more hours to the admin position for the Lister's office and increased the training budget there as well, because that's going to be coming in, you know, a little bit behind someone who has to train and learn like Nemeric and BT Pi and, you know, all that software. So just increase that a little bit. Um, so those were the changes and obviously the thinking is more money in the highway fund. You know, we're seeing it now. I mean, the weather is crazy. We are, you know, it's the storm this weekend and then we're getting another storm coming in with snow. And then after that, it's going to be rain and it's going to warm up. So we are going to be cleaning the downtown at, uh, three, uh, around 3 AM. And the reason that the select, that the, road crew wants to do it is because they want to get rid of this snow because when the other snow comes in that it rains if everything freezes up we're going to flood downtown because the storm drains will be covered so um we certainly realize that some of the roads are in not in great shape and um with thawing freezing thawing and it's rained since i don't know what may yeah. um and then you know it's just difficult to put you know, difficult to manage. Obviously, I think one of the things that we talked about in the report is that when we have mud season, as usual in the spring, we have a month or two to clean that up. But this time in between, we had about four days where we could actually be on the roads because our trucks loaded are 65,000 pounds and what portion of roads are held together will destroy. So it's just been this real crazy weather pattern, I think, to acknowledge that um, we had taken some money out of the salt budget, put more money into gravel, and then adding more money into capital roads, capital equipment. You know, it's the only way we can truly battle, you know, what's happening here with with the change in weather. So um, I do want to say on that note, please be prepared. 
uh, the the roads on the, the back roads are hazardous, you know, that's frozen, they're frozen ruts, and then the snow is going to cover it. And it's just makes it difficult for travel. We're expecting this to be heavy, wet snow ahead of the rain. So if you have a generator, have gas, have perishable foods, water, just use some caution. We're expecting there's going to be trees and branches, you know, down ahead of that. So possibly some power outages. So I do try to put warnings out on Facebook and front porch forum to let people know, but it's, it's definitely, uh, uh, it's like a bag of cats right now. I just don't know what we're going to get every time we see the weather. I'm not sure whether to cry or smash my head against a wall. So um, just please use caution. And and we and we are aware of the situation with the roads and, and where they are. And we haven't forgotten about you. Um, we have a list and and kind of at this stage of the game, it's it's a triage. And that's that's what we're doing. So I really appreciate it. Uh been a handful of different posts that the town has done um you know sort of out to all the different sources of those sorts of explanations i think yeah. that's really helpful and i i'm just sort of curious do you think from the town office's perspective have those helped to clarify to the larger population like has there been a, a good shift with doing those sorts of posts i mean you know we've heard of some positive reports that people feel you know better informed and then you know, we're still getting balled out a bunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, so people are just frustrated. So they, you know, call and, and um, certainly, but I think the focus is for us is we want people to know we aren't ignoring you and we are aware there's just limited when the roads were so muddy, it, you know, it was just hard. We couldn't get to you to, well, because it was so bad, we were just going to make it worse. And I think that's really horrible to say and we felt horrible i mean we as people that we couldn't do better um but once it froze up we certainly hit it hard for campbell and dart and brank and lisville because we knew how bad it was and certainly our next focus needs to be mcintosh and a little bit of gilead so we're hoping that it's going to soften up enough um with the rain and the warm temperature a little bit of frost comes out we may be able to grade those out so it's mm -hmm. it's just difficult to yeah. kind of stay ahead but i, I think I don't think more information hurts. Never hurts. Yeah. Everybody needs it as a detour. Well, it's not helping it any. It is not helping it any, and that is not our detour. We do have the official detour and the signage that's out um, through Jay McDonald through the state is tells the people what the detour is. They're just people are using MapQuest and they're going that way and. And, um, you know, we've, they're not going to adhere because they just blow by them because they can see on their map quest that they can get to where they want to go. Um, the wing walls were poured on Camp Brook on um, Friday. And so it usually has a cure time of seven days. I know that the contractor wanted to go a little less, so they were working through the state about that, if they could do that. And, and then I spoke to um, McDonald about backfilling and, and getting in there. So I haven't had any more updates since, you know, Friday afternoon. All I know is that they were poured and poured successfully. So, you know, I just fingers crossed that thing opens up sooner rather than later. Yes. What's kind of is that the road used to be a I start calling the state police right away. I mean, so yeah. Windsor County. Yeah. Windsor, Windsor, Windsor County. Windsor County. Windsor County. <laughs> though, it's like, I got drive state. You know, I don't want to run over anybody. No. <laughs> I'm not sure for anybody, but like, I feel like the county needs crazy around here. It's almost worse than Boston. Like, yeah. I, just, I, I, I drop it on every time somebody tells you. Yeah. I don't care who they are. You know, don't, don't ride back me because I'm going to run into some older person or like, Sure. I don't we, know if there's other ways to deal with it. It's all over this region, honestly. Yeah. The billionaires, the flatlanders, and even up in this place. And it's just as bad as, as anywhere else. My advice is to pull into someone's driveway and let them go past you. Yeah. But, but otherwise, you know, people are going to start to like get run over, you know, mm -hmm. drive like that. It's just, it's just statistic. I mean, it's down in Hartford everywhere, too. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, no matter what your age is, especially if you're older or younger, you don't run over. Those roads are terrible. Yeah. Well, now that we have um, just started contracting with the Windsor County. My sheriff hopefully we'll see a little bit less of that but i i know what you mean i actually live on a back road myself and sometimes i do feel like the pace car and uh, but i'm like hey this is what i'm willing to do and um so 
you know, so I can understand. But yeah, Windsor County Sheriff is who you want to call. And um, I believe their information now, our contact information is on our website. And but hopefully as we see them doing bigger patrols, we'll, you know, increase patrols, we'll see a less of that. So I know it's it's a bit crazy. It, it's true. It's true. Right. So, so guys, budget back to the, so we had, um, so those are the changes that we'd made and why. So um, the revenues obviously didn't change. I don't know. I think it'd just be easier if you have any specific changes or questions, it would be easier to do that than go line by line or page by page. would like to go to the line with the, was it grant writer? Okay. Yep. Under, no, it was just, um, we had contract. So it was, it was contract that. Writer. Yeah, yeah contract contract labor. Labor that after the last meeting, you guys all seem to agree for consensus to cut that back to 10,000. So that's still 10,000. I got your email, Gene, after I'd already sent out the right. warning and everything. Right. So, um, well, I have another update. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, so at the end of the last meeting, you all seem to agree by consensus that you didn't think the IREC was going to happen. And so we all yeah. kind of agreed. So it's at 10. And then I got your your new um, information. Right. So what's your new update? Well, the new update is that we've had another town that's dropped. dropped. Out. And so there's updated numbers. And uh, happened again what I said this morning. <laughs> Legislator, we are oh. perfect storm. Uh, and you know, the, if another town drops out, well, it's a, probably already the case that uh, <clears throat> if, even if we just went with the numbers that I sent you, uh, we would we may be talking about if another town then dropped out, we would be probably going back to the drawing board about it, maybe a part-time position and trying to refigure that. Uh, the We are the only town that had considered a budget item. Uh, the other four towns on this list are uh, taking it to their town meetings as a special warned item with, and the warning, I, I think the warning would, if we were to go that route, the warning would set up a fund to deal with this, but if it didn't go, we would then be able to use the town, the monies for energy and, and yeah. climate subjects. So that the those had to be a two part that the first one had to go the account and the second one had to fund it. But that's an easy question for me to well town uh, the 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 Vermont League they that's and they and they even suggested that it's better to do it as one. Yeah. But but however, um I, so yeah. I'm still I still want to encourage it, but I think I want I think it's probably best my opinion, mm -hmm. it's best probably to ask the town. To just put it as a don't include it in the budget and just not, ask for not it as a separate to put article. it in the budget, but to put it in as a separate article. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean that's that's your idea. Okay. It's so that way we're not goofing with the budget. We're, we're not you know. messing with the budget. Uh, if it goes down, it goes down. <laughs> yeah. But so that's your idea. Okay. So then leaving, you're okay with then leaving the contract labor thing at, at 10, that item. 
Yeah. Okay. And then put that would be as because if this was passed, we wouldn't include it in the budget, just like we don't um the extra funding for the South Royalton or the South Royalton Senior Center or the um yeah. So so is there any other questions? So we'll tackle yours under the warning. So is there any other questions on the budget? Because then you can kind of stay in order. Yeah, I just, agenda. Well, no, I just this is where I thought it needed to be as well. We've and I don't about know if the others agree or. I, I I think I would agree that at a minimum, putting it to the voters and not just dropping the issue is sort of our due diligence to the committee members that have put in their due diligence. Um, you know, and so if we as a board decide we can't put these numbers into our budget, then yes, I think that it should at a minimum go to the the voters. I know it's a hard year, right? But it's also not ours to decide. Do we pick? The food shelf over the library or the library over the energy coordinator you know that's i think that's why this option and this mechanism exists for the towns is there are hard decisions and sometimes it's it can't be just up to the group of five that's up here and, and, and at some point and one of the reasons i preface that with this perfect storm in terms of tax you know tax appeals is uh, the fact is we get hit with all of these worthy issues and then perhaps what I believe is something we have to, we can, we have to stop at some point putting it off it doesn't get dealt with at all. And so that's, and I think that's where the energy committee is ultimately coming from. At some point, I I have, gonna a, have, I have to a question about, the and I don't, there's nobody else here from the energy committee, but I would, I would ask that these, all these towns with energy committees, which there are some, why are they not lobbying uh, two rivers harder to, to establish this position within their framework? We can have it within their framework. The problem is that Two Rivers will charges for administering this kind of a position. If it is not housed at Two Rivers, they're charging 6% of the salary embedded. If they house it, they're charging 80%. It is less expensive for two rivers to administer it, but not to house it. And if that was, he wanted two rivers to house it. Scott He's, would prefer because he feels there's more oversight. That wasn't the takeaway yeah. I got. No, well, snapshot. Scott, that would be Scott's preference. Well, yeah. Uh, financially, it didn't seem to make sense to the working group okay. uh, and two rivers will still provide the day-to-day -day oversight of the position will handle the hiring firing discipline any of those kinds of issues with input from the community's steering committee so it's a it's a hybrid. <laughs> on that, is there anyone from Bethel's Energy Committee now on that? On the planning group. On the planning group. Scott. Oh, Scott is okay. Scott Scott has been there. Thank you. And, I lost and, track. I lost track. And Dave said we've talked about this several Scott's times. Out of town. Scott. I saw Scott this afternoon at one o'clock. I thought he was out of town. No, I talked to him in front of the post office for 45 minutes about all kinds of stuff, nothing to do with the energy committee. Um, but he came to that one meeting and I, I haven't seen him here since. And there's other people like Ellie comes to the meeting and as the chair. And sometimes there's a whole bunch of people from the energy, from the rec committee when they're doing the skateboard park, but we don't rarely see, and you're not on the energy committee. I've been sitting with them for years. Right, I can't. I have been sitting with them. Right, right. But I'm not a member. Okay, well, that's kind of, I think what Dave was kind of 
I don't want to speak for Dave, but my concern is that, you know, Ellie shows up and different people show up from different committees um, and explain what they're, they're doing. And it's just, and it's great. You've been explaining, but I would like to see somebody from the energy committee come and speak. I've looked over the different minute, minute meetings from the energy committee as well. And back in May, uh, you folks said you learned you could apply for, um, there was a grant for assessments up to five uh, buildings. Um, and, you know, at the end of last week's meet, last meeting, I was online and I had suggested it was an emotion of perhaps tabling this for the town of Bethel until next year um, to see who's doing what. And at one point, um, it seemed like people were in agreement. And then you had mentioned towards the end that maybe say to the energy committee, this is quoting you what you said, um, maybe give the energy committee X amount of dollars to help residents themselves to to work with the money that we have versus municipal buildings. And Therese made a good uh, statement, a couple of meetings or last meet, maybe it's two meetings ago, all the money that the town has saved with the water bills, changing the lights. Um, Dave has been helping out with some of the energies that, that we have taken care of because it seems like this, this grant writer person the grant writing is going to be for municipal buildings. It's not going to be if Joanne needs help, you know. But that That's a fundamental misunderstanding of this position. Okay, because that's not, what I'm just saying and, what and, Scott had told and, us. Well, it is much more than just a grant writer. Oh, I understand that. Okay, it is also an organizer which is not Two Rivers Bailiwick, but it is to uh, recruit, train uh, a regional network of people who are concerned about these issues. It is to know about, study, get the information, not only about funds that are available, but the science around the various kinds of solutions that might be considered it's not just about buildings, it's also about vehicles and other all of the energy that we use. Uh, it's, um, I, I was personally disappointed when Scott came and said, I think it's a good idea and you ought to do it. Basically, without giving any of the rationale or the, the purposes behind it. The history is that Nicole Sear started this and Nicole continued to provide leadership for this until a couple weeks or a month or a couple months ago. Uh, and uh, the and th then when, uh, during her leaving the energy committee she kept doing this while the energy committee was rebuilding scott began attending the meeting um, but was scott's not a salesman i don't know uh, so I was I was disappointed that he didn't say these are these are the things that we're looking for this person to do. It's not just grant writing, but it's it's a whole range of uh, climate things. It's it's keeping the records. What are our greenhouse gas emissions? Not just from our buildings, but from the road crews and and all of the all the other kinds of things. What can we do that's better as a town? But also, how can we help the citizens in the town do what they can do to weatherize, to uh, put in heat pumps, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, 
So they would not be helping uh, Denise put in a heat pump, but they would be getting information for opportunities. People. Is that education, you know, what is a heat pump? <laughs> Why do you want to think about it? Yeah. Uh, or, you know, yeah, I thought about so, it. I bought my house, but I looked it all up. I looked at efficiency Vermont, what I can get for a prebate. And now I see GMP is doubling, more than doubling their their rebate, prebate on, right. on heat pumps. But I learned that on the news, or I can go online and look, learn any of that. Yes. The first year pilot program. So we had started around 9,000, and then we got, so now we're at 22,000. Is this subtracting the four thousand dollars? Subtracting so, the MERP. So the MERP on top of it means our share would actually be twenty six seven ninety seven. So chances are that wouldn't go down. Yes, next year. yes, okay. because well, the four thousand dollars from MERP, MERP right is yeah. part of this year's right exactly. So that's my point is so it looks like twenty two, but in fact it's twenty six thousand seven ninety seven because we're giving them the MERP, which is right, right, but. It, so next year it could be go from twenty two to thirty, depending on, and we still don't know how it's going to turn out. Who's going to say yay or nay at the? And who's going to say yay or nay? And put is it going to be a full time? Is it going to be a part time? Right. And all of those, or is it simply going to? We're going to throw yeah. our hands up and say, "Nice try." Right. Exactly. Uh, I I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Yeah. And that's what you're telling us right now is uh, one more town bows out, it's all it's a it <clears throat> or it's at least down to say a two thirds position. Okay. It, and then there's all kinds of other questions, but that's that's when the that's my opinion. <laughs> uh okay. that, that that that's what the group will say. Another if two towns go out. It's, I don't think it's, it's not. Gonna so happen. you won't really know until March. We will point. not, we do not know. We will not know until. Well, unless some of these towns have Brookfield, Rochester, Royalton, or West Fairley that you know of agreed yet to put this on their warning. Uh, Rochester has already got it on their warning. They're, okay. they're perhaps. So Rochester's on the warning. Okay. Uh, so you got one. Royalton is leaning that way. So no uh, votes, yeah. Okay. No votes. Well, because they're in the same boat as we are. They're, 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 it to get they're it all in the same boat. Sure. West Fairly is a go. Oh, they are a go. Okay, awesome. Um, I'll put that on there. So it's 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 mm -hmm. alive in these five towns. Mm -hmm. it, it's, so, <laughs> it's as firm as we can get. I know. So if we'll that's a warning question. So back to the budget. Does anybody have any questions or concerns about the budget we want to talk about? And then we'll you can tackle that at your next item for your warning. Did you have any budget questions? No, that okay. was okay, that no, was perfect. the line that I wanted to exact. Okay, that's perfect. Ladies. Any warrant budget questions? No, nothing major. Okay. I'm good. Okay. So we will talk about we are oh, wait, Paul Valley is saying pick me. I'm sorry, Paul. I didn't <laughs> so Paul may have a question. Sorry, I didn't see him. Hi. Hi. Hi Paul. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. So the bottom line increase on the budget. Let me turn my volume down a little bit. The the bottom line uh number on the increase of the budget over last year is 2.38%, if I read the sideways chart correctly? For the expenses, yes, but yes. to be raised by taxes is 2.7. Right, and that so does, that, that does converts, not, go ahead. That does, sorry, Paul, that does not include, that does not include um, the 25,000 for the food shelf, 6,000 right. for the, you know, right. it doesn't include those add-ons. Okay, yes, I just wanna make sure. All that. So yeah, and, just and at so, that point, so that converts to how many cents? Well, we're saying that increase. a penny a penny on the tax rate raises about um, twenty thousand, right? Yeah, I think I said oh snap, I thought I read let me say hang on a second. I thought I wrote it down. One penny on the tax rate equals twenty five thousand. Twenty five. Yes, okay. sir. So what does that increase convert to in pennies 
So I, you know what? You're you're short because uh, Chris Jarvis is a penny person and I'm the percentage <laughs> person. So we always duke this out. I, I think <laughs> so. Um, I, I think Dave's going to do the math. I think it's just important to be able to tell somebody if you have a hundred thousand dollar house, this well, increase is going to cost you, I don't know, 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, whatever. Exactly. Well, I did, I did figure that, um, based on, I did a $250,000 home and, oh. and without the additional articles, taxes oh. would be 3,213, but with the additional, they'd go up. I think it was additional about 75. All right. So if you, so for every $250,000, uh, value of the property, your tax is going to go up three thousand. Would you say your total, your total tax based on a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar home? Yeah. Um. With with the budget that the select board is presenting, yep. taxes for the year would be three thousand two thirteen. That's just a municipal. That's just the municipal tax, not the school. Oh, that's and that's total total tax, though. Yeah, that's total tax. Yeah. As opposed to what 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 was it last year? So what's the increase? What's the actual increase? Um, I don't have last year's tax rate with me, Paul. Uh, well, actually, okay. I did. Hang on a second. I might, because I have my budget folder. I, I might. Let me look. You're, you're pushing the right questions for me. Well, I'm just, I noticed person. in the paper, there was an article in the paper about Chelsea dealing with the, you know, law enforcement. And they had, yeah. they really had specific numbers about how much it was going to cost to have each, right. you know, variable that they were looking at for law enforcement. So at this number here, at 2.38 cents, it's Three cents on the tax rate. Three cents on the tax rate is what Dave is saying. Yeah. That's without the extras. Yeah, without the extras. And I'm looking to see if I have a copy of the tax rate in my folder. Hang on. Well, you know, Chris would have the math whipped out by now because you know how he, <laughs> he does pennies. Sure. So I do percent. And I think last year, if I remember correctly, Paul, didn't last year we figured that the percentage was about, if it was a 3% increase, it was three cents. I think we kind of were at that boat last year. Yeah, but people, you know, it's it's a hard transition to make from three cents to how much has it hit my tax dollar, you know? Never mind, Evan. Yeah, so I, I just can't answer your question right now, Paul. I mean, okay. I don't have, okay. I don't know what this year's municipal tax rate is off the top of my head. Yeah. So... If you have a tax bill, you could tell me what it says. But, well, I, you know, and I know that I know that the school, you know, portion of it is a large percentage of it, 65, 66 percent, whatever. But right. I think it's good to say and that and then the, the additional items, you've got sixty one thousand dollars worth of potential additionals. Yeah, those will cost somebody that... about set. That's going to be about $75 a year for somebody, I believe, with a $250,000 home. That's the difference. Yeah. I did that on the second page. So um, actually, if I take three, two, eight, three, two, one, three. Yeah, the difference was $75. So the additional on a $250,000 home, the additional appropriations are going to cost somebody $75 additional per year in taxes. Okay. And that's about, about $61,000 worth of additional. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. You think it would be more, but um, that's what, yeah, it it would. And, that's, and I'm basing but, that too. Well, that's on, three cents. Yeah, exactly. And I'm basing that on a grand list with no growth at this yep. point. Yep. So, you know, the numbers are, you know, we go to kind of estimate tax rate, I'm basing on no growth. So you know how that goes. If we lose, then the tax rate goes up because we don't have the multiplier, but if it goes down, we do. So, yep. um, but that's where we're at. So that's three cents on the tax rate. So that gives you an idea of what we're looking yeah, at. So the, so the, in, the increase in the actual budget that's being proposed is what? 3.6 cents. Yep. So, that sounds you know, right. so it's, a little bit more than maybe it might be ninety dollars or you know yeah that, that, that sounds would right. be helpful information that's the number that makes sense to me yeah it's the the dollar amount of increase over the course of the year 
which is information we will start, you know, we always publish in town, we'll publish in town report. Um, but obviously you can't go out and do it without an approved budget. So I did hear that the school is coming in with some kind of change in the yield. We thought they were going to drop a little bit, but I'm not sure currently what their tax rate, what they're, they're proposed to go down at first, but I think that has changed. So we'll see what the school rate's going to do. Of course. <laughs> That's a whole other beast, but. Okay, well, I think it's just good to have those numbers to be able to show at the, the budget presentation before town meeting and, and yep. at town yeah, meeting. Yeah, we, we had talked about putting a little notes on the end beside each article on how much it would cost on the tax rate. And um, so it depends to some of it, the way you break it out on the what the co value of your home is, so. Yeah, but um, but it, yeah, it'll go in a town report. So we'll, but uh, um, so yeah, that's the answer. So we got twenty five thousand dollars per penny. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Do you guys have any other questions on the budget, or this is what we're gonna go with? And I'll build the warning around this. Yeah. Sounds good. We we don't need to make a motion. No, you guys going in, yeah. Okay, so any you you've seen minutes and other. Oh wait, we got to do the warning. Uh, oh yeah, and there's a. I didn't want to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> there was a tension. Dave's like, no. we eight o'clock yet? Yeah, almost seven twenty-seven. Got time. So, uh, Denise found a mistake in the warning, so we're gonna fix in the draft warning. Um. It was that the select board under Article A, I think it was Article A, Article 1, Article 1. oh yeah. All right, hang on. Yeah, I had this select board, here we go. I had this select board, um, I had a select board member for a three-year term and then a one select board member for a one-year term and it should have been a two-year term. So we'll fix that. <laughs> and the list yeah and so article two now we know what that's going to be um then there's the library the food shelf the social services um royalton senior center i have to check with pam i think they hand in their petition but more of a um friends of the historic playhouse those are all things we're waiting for you know vote dates or uh property tax due dates is goes through nine Article 10 is to the voters to eliminate the office of town lister um, to replace with a professionally qualified assessor. And that's certainly what we have built the budget around. And I did put a little note in there because this is unusual, but per state statute, this vote has to be paper ballot. So someone's going to have to, you can't do a voice vote. You'll have to do paper. And Rick Benson is aware of that. I gave him the draft to edit. And then, um, so then you roll into the non-binding. So it just looks a little different this year because Article 1 just kind of lays out that you're electing those officers by um, Australian ballot. And, and the warning ahead, it tells you up above where the polls are and what the time they're open. So, so I don't know if anybody found any other edits on the warning besides Denise. Does Denise get extra credit? She should. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I thought you already had that. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And so, and so you have the suggested language. I do. I have the suggested language for the energy coordinator person. And, and so I just want to speak to that for a second and say yeah. when you vote, the, the wording for that is very important. When you vote a capital fund, why you're creating it stays with that until you vote again. If you remember, um, we had to vote, I believe at a town meeting in the last few years to change that we were gonna add money to the um, um, appraisal fund because of the way the article was worded. So um, you have to be really clear, you know, think about that long-term, um, the wording of the article and um, so just keep that in mind when you're doing it. I think it's important for you to understand that, that it stays with it. So you vote again. And 
And that would be this 22 figures. I guess it would now, <laughs> as <Yeah>. of today. <laughs> so, and and I assume the check with two good or with town. I will, but that's if you get these other three people to agree to put on the warning. <laughs> but yes, I will double check with them just because I was drafting this one and I was looking at their last year's advice and it was a two question, but the law probably changed. No big deal. I'll ask them. So I heard you say it, say it again, what we can do with this money if we get it on the warning and it passes, but then the in position the blows up. Yeah. We've got the money and we can use it for uh, municipal or residential or whatever. What was the, do you have the email? Oh, maybe I printed it out. Let's see, I was figured. Um, the one that Gene, that with the language in it that Gene. Oh. Point that we're going to be doing sort of the next level of exploration into a town garage. Oh, here it is. If, if this, com not committee, but if this position doesn't happen, could the town then use that set of funds towards energy efficiency inputs into oh. the new building, right? Is, is it? Yeah, he's saying, okay, so it says, shall the town of Bethel create a reserve fund of 22797 for the purpose of hiring an interregional energy resilience coordinator in collaboration with other towns approving the position and funding energy and resilience projects as determined by the select oh. board. So it's an interesting leaves it wide open. It leaves it it's interesting because we don't a capital fund most generally is created for capital buildings or capital funds. It's not usually created to fund a position that's an odd use well, of a capital it's a fund. It's a reserve fund. Well, it's same difference. Okay. Reserve capital are just the same okay. thing. It's the same, just different words for the same point. So, um, so shall the town, you know, so you're creating it either for this person and funding energy and resilience projects as determined by the select board. Um, we had written it before. And she said, no, is that then it becomes two different things? Yeah. You could also say for the purpose of funding energy and resilience projects as determined by the select board, um, which gives the select board, it removes the IREC out of it, but it still doesn't, doesn't say they can't be funded via that. It just narrows down this, you know what I mean? You could still right. fund a person out of so it because it would be up to the determination. It's, of the it's saying a lot of money towards <clears throat> Mm -hmm. yeah. and then the select board would decide to yeah. the where, it, it almost right. seems like you would be, be I mean I I get fault. the I get the I'm trying to think of the most practical way part of me thinks if you're going to fund it if you're going to have a position then that's your article you go to the voters for 929 or whatever 22,000 oh, my glasses on 22,797 and then they put it in the budget or they don't. And then you could start your own capital fund separately. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm of concerned and it's probably more from an accounting position that we're creating a capital fund of fund a position. And I'm not saying it can't be done. I just, right. think it's and I think my concern would be the opposite of if we limit ourselves to only the position and then the rest of it falls apart, then we've got this chunk of money that, we're hamstrung and we can't do anything. Right. With. It would Whereas go into it your, it'd go with your undesignated fund balance. You're right. Yeah. You're right. right. Position and yep. projects as determined by the select board, then it kind of gives the select board and any select board in the future more flexibility. Right. To it leaves it definitely leaves it wide open because it's saying and funding energy and resilience projects as determined. So you I would say that since it's pretty wide, that the select board could say, okay, say the funding didn't go and we're moving forward with you know bonding on a town garage and then in the future i mean obviously we would register that project i mean i don't know it seems like more of a capital fund issue. i don't know e e whatever it's so my point being that the wording of the capital fund warning language is important because it will stay with there until you vote again at town meeting but since this is fairly wide open you probably could interpret it as the select board would decide what projects 
they want to do. So it's just a, it's just an unusual one. That's all. So I guess it's just a matter of if uh, if you've got enough people here to get this on the warning. Yeah, it would uh, definitely feel better to me if it was uh, less specific. Which is what that. So you mean means. taking the energy, the person, the hiring inner. Well, that wording on it. You can leave that in there, but uh -huh. it, because we have the other, if that falls out, falls through, and we have the other. The and funding. And scope of what could be done. Right, and I don't. Yeah. We just got admonished for not appreciating what people are doing, and I just feel if we were to take that position out of that warning, right, out of the we're saying, you know, thanks but no thanks. Right. Okay. If we leave that in there, we're. We're, we're we're leaving ourselves the ability to do something else with it. Okay. And we're also saying, well, this works, right? And I and I think that while we've been sitting here discussing this week after week, somebody picking up their you know the town packet and the warning and just reading it without anything about a position might feel really caught off guard. If mm -hmm. all of a sudden then it's being funded, it's being used to fund a position. It's like, well, why wasn't that clearly stated? You know, and so mm -hmm. I sort I, I think I would lean with Dave on this one of the the keeping that language with the broader scope okay. is maybe to everybody's benefit, future select boards plus okay. it's a bit more informative to yeah. the, the so, voting population. So then so Go ahead. I was just going to say, should we add this, the task force is prepared to to make a presentation about what this is and how it come about. That makes sense. Yes, you, you know, would, yeah, the self board isn't going to be able to stand up right. and talk to the article. But so then, so you want to add it to the warning. You want to add it to the warning. You want to add it to the warning. Well, not voting till we see. <laughs> Denise, do you want? I mean, if you do, you want to add it to the draft warning that. 22 for the position in the 22797 okay uh, i know what do I you want to do a different portion sorry dave did you want to do something did you want to reword that or side the straight is there something we'd like to see I'm done just of the towns that are that have dropped out just in the since our last meeting you know we started out originally with with like nine thousand something and then with the for the first year because of the merp grant and then it was going to be 12 and then it went to 19 and now we're up to 22 um without for me there's no guarantee that these other towns are saying yes we're going to go through with it so it's just me it's you know it's it's kind of a kind of a crapshoot you know well the, i think gene gene's point was they would probably adjust it might not be a full-time position anymore it would be a two-thirds or a half-time position so i think just like any budget-driven entity if you don't get a full budget you adjust what you can do to the means that you do have and so if they don't get all of the funding through it doesn't mean the thing would necessarily just fold it might just shift into a lesser time position so worst case scenario you've set aside the money for future capital projects doesn't mean you're going to fund the same thing next year mm. you could if you if it say it goes through you may not be happy after a year and so you say no so it goes back to the select board again next year it's not like yeah. a given. right it's not a given and even to say the position doesn't happen and you've set the money aside for an energy or other funds it doesn't mean you right. have to fund it again next year but you have twenty two thousand seven ninety seven in a fund for energy projects moving forward so it's a it's just tough because it's last week we thought it was a tabled issue so then it so we're just it's crazy thank and, you be careful walking home and um we need to sign sign in she did she did she did she came back and yeah so um, um so yeah, it's a it's a quandary, and um, I think it's the part that's, I think it's just difficult, more difficult this year than any other year, just because you have all the add-ons. Well, and the add-ons, the food shelf and the library, and the, the she at the library, Lisa gave a better, even though it's not on paper, gave a better yeah. view of what they got, what they're getting, 
the food shelf did a spreadsheet with a pie and this and that. And, and I don't, I know we've asked and Chris has asked for like something on paper besides just this, like what exactly is this? Because like I said, Scott said, it's basically from municipal. You're saying it could, and I know it's for more than a grant writer, but there's the education. It, there's just nothing on paper like the pie that says, okay, we can do this. This is what this is going to encompass. It's been a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And yeah, at the end of the last meeting, I rewatched the meeting. It was more like, we're probably just going to table it and it might not happen. And, you know, we might just say for the energy committee, you can have the MERP money and say another six grand out of that capital fund to do X, Y, Z. So are you concerned to, are you concerned that say Bethel's paying whatever our percentage, if we're just, I'm going to make it up, say we're paying 30%. Are you concerned that we're not going to get 30% of the benefit of the person? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of part of it. How do we know that one of these other towns that doesn't have, I mean, do all these towns have a town clerk and a town manager? So is someone like no. West Fairley no. going to be using this more because they don't have somebody like with the expertise of like a Therese or a grant writer that can kind of get some of our stuff, um, you know, because can West Fairley say, okay, this is everything that we want and Bethel just wants this, but somebody... I don't know exactly how that works because we have no paper, no breakdown of how all that works. You know, how is it monitored if West Fairley only gets, you know, 12%? It, it, two things, one or three things. We have also been receiving for the last several months anyway, the reports of the working group. The working group that has put this together. So all of the detail is there, including the position description, uh, the rationale, the deliverables. Um, that's all there uh, and has been made available. So, so that, that's one thing. The other is that we have intentionally not said that because we have 22% of the funding that we get 22% of the or 22.6 no, no. so because that we're not equating the work with ours, for example, that we get 22% of the person's time. This is a regional position. A lot of the work is going to be the same, whether it's for your town or my town or whatever. And it's a nightmare to try and, you know, split it out in that kind of a way. Frankly, I think Wes Fairley is going to get more than their share. I, I just, uh, but we're the only town that has a town manager on this list. Uh, and Rochester has an energy committee, kind of. <laughs> But none of the other towns do. Oh, Bethel's the only one here with energy. Committee. Right. Oh. So these, which is part of the part of the uh, small town Vermont reality, and this person, especially without Randolph, they're going to be dealing with small towns, not with you know, larger communities that have different kinds of resources. And and so well, the point is we've tried very hard to say this is, we want to pay for it so that everybody can participate. And frankly, we expect because 
who necessarily has fewer resource, fewer things to spend it on, they're probably going to get less in terms of dollar return. We're all going to grow and benefit. It's a it's an it's been a negotiation that's been quite fun for the last. Yeah, I mean, it could be a situation too where you, if I mean obviously things are changing we've made adjustments in our own budget because the roads etc about that i mean we it isn't the thought of whether you do it this year or next year i mean it is something to consider for you to start a capital fund for energy or you know resilience projects so um whether you do that this year in this vehicle or whether you do it in another way it's certainly something for you to think about okay another question our, our number of 22,797 doesn't include the 4,000 change of the... Okay. Right. So the other, still, oh, we still have to give them the four. That's okay. Yeah, okay. But my question is, do all these other towns have $4,000 they're going to kick in? So it's uh, 22 and 23 and 35 and all that? Okay. Because they've all... They, part of the negotiation has been for this year these towns are choosing to use that merp grant of four thousand for this purpose so there's another 20 so basically this is 120,000 right. and, and so then in the second year the total dollars goes yeah, up i don't i can say i don't yeah I don't, the second i don't like up. this <clears throat> i don't like this you're telling me something that's not you're not telling the full dollar now i'm sorry that i'm just if it's going to cost one hundred twenty thousand dollars, I'd rather you tell me that and then say, okay, but we have an offset, rather than it, I'm going to, we're telling you one hundred thousand dollars, but it's going to be one hundred twenty. Um, so the um, so uh, they all got the merp, and we I'm talked about. I'm sorry that, that that's coming as new information. No, I, I kind of in the beginning. I knew it was for us. I guess I didn't know that all the other talents got the same. Four thousand. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, that's I think why it's, yeah. there's a pilot project. That's yeah, that's so um anyway, so that's the so we would know this number would change. And there's also concern about once you once you start dialing back the percentage of the of the job, I be I become concerned about what everybody's going to get. I mean, it, if it becomes only a 40% job, I don't know exactly how to say it, but I don't, it, it's either, to me, it's, you know, it's either a job or it's not. So you're, oh, you're concerned that if the, some towns don't make, if they don't get on, they don't get voted through, then the job becomes, goes from a full-time job to a part-time job to a less than job. Right. I see. Okay. With us. Say that exactly. Right. I think the idea of working. Well, that's what I thought. If, if one town backed out, but it sounds like if even up to two towns back out, they're going to try to make a job. Right. And, if, and if then what quality of a person are you going to get when you start running that uh, uh, salary down to a much lower level? Are you going to actually get a qualified person for that job? And I guess my point is take the scenario, two towns voted down, so now there's only three towns involved and Two Rivers starts negotiating it out. And Bethel says, actually, this isn't what we were signing on for and we're no longer gonna be part of it. That money that's been appropriated isn't lost and it still can go towards the things it was appropriated for. And now it's 100% okay. Bethel. So I think the to me, the wording of that warning becomes- Allows the, us to back out even at the very end. Right, and so if, if down the road it gets decided it's going to be a halftime position and Bethel Select Board starts to feel like, well, we're not, this isn't what we were signing on for and what we were wanting out of it, it doesn't mean that appropriated money has just gone to somebody else. It's actually stayed within our town and now 100% of those funds would be used, utilized within somewhere. our town. Yeah. So it's, it's not a loss in my mind. And I think that the Select Board would still have that ability to pull out. Even what if the that, voters voted for it? But it's written the the way that she's saying it's written okay. being because I think it's at, at and, our at our discretion. It's still going to be right. at our discretion. Right. It exactly. says for the purpose of hiring an interregional energy resilient coordinator, IREC, 
in collaboration with other towns approving the position. So the fund is and funding energy and resilience projects as determined by the select board. When I read it, I felt like the as determined by the select board was other towns, but I, I think for here, back for two seconds, obviously if you create a capital fund, you're the only one who can approve the spending of it, how it goes. So you could put the kibosh to it if another town fell through and then you have an account with 22,000 that you could use. Or no, we just take, 22. We take, we take that MERP back. I don't know, no, they said <laughs> that if it doesn't go through, the MERP is already in the current budget we're in. So that if we're not giving it to somebody else or putting it in this fund later, that would, I think the energy committee was going to use the four for local. Oh, okay. So, stuff. okay. So the MERP money is not going to automatically go to this if no, we back out. No, no. no. it's going to stay local. That's what he said before. And okay. So that okay. stays with Bethel and with the Bethel energy. Right. All right. Cause when I added that, 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 I wanted to apply for it's been received. Yeah. All right. So then I asked at the last meeting, I said, and we'll if we'll table it, you know, we can still use the MERP, the MERP money can still be used. You're like, well, we've already are planning on giving the MERP money to this, whether we are in it or not. It was my understanding. Yeah, I left the wrong impression. Okay. So we I mean I had COVID, so who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Denise had COVID, she didn't know. So we'll um Okay, so then that's clear on the four grand. Right, it so stays it, in that we well, it doesn't matter. It sounds to me like we can decide, the four of us could decide to do this as it's written. Mm -hmm. And after town meeting, we could do something different. You could. You have the right. I mean, because the capital fund is controlled by you. How, however... I would say that you're going into it saying that you're going to fund a position right but if there what we're what i'm saying is if, if people start dropping off and right we don't feel comfortable right i think that's why the person said and instead of or right instead of or resilience projects so yeah this is Mm -hmm. so the other thing too is i mean obviously you have multiple choices here whether or not you're going to put on the warning and the other thing is too is um and i hate to say this but just because gene is saying 22797 you could say no you could say we're willing to we will put it on the warning but we're only willing to fund ten thousand dollars i mean just because no offense that gene's right. asking for 22 doesn't mean you have to give it to him you could say We'll put it on the warning, but we're going to put it in as less. But you, you know, you haven't done the warning yet, so you still have the opportunity to to do that. Just so. Well, I'm not trying to make. I'm trying to give you all your options. I don't want you just crying later saying I should no, have told right. you something. You're <laughs> yeah. absolutely right. I almost said this earlier when we were talking about do we have it in the budget versus on the warning. And one of the downsides of being on the warning is you're very savvy with where you where you get money from the budget in and you had already done that of you know we have this pot for the grants consulting mm -hmm. and so we could use that and so like the town doesn't benefit from your ability to see the bigger picture of numbers in the mm -hmm. way that you do and funnel money but we could also say we're you know like you're saying we could say we're willing to fund x but then if two rivers came back you know there may be creative ways to get there and the town may say no, we've given you the amount, you know, so it's, yeah, like, it could be. And, and you don't know if the other towns are going to put it on their warning. So maybe you dropping from 22,000 to whatever, 10, 12, you, then you're cognizantly and consciously making a decision that, you know, you have just solely said that is no longer going to be a full-time position. That's even if everybody goes through, if you give less, you're saying, you know what, let's try it at a half-time position. So you know what I mean? So you're mm -hmm. still making that. I don't think anybody is seriously thinking of anything less than 60%. Right. More like three quarters, if we could swing a budget. It's, it's kind of a, the task force. So see, he's already <laughs> telling you can knock his price down by 25%. You're a great salesman. <laughs> now, so, just for... My curiosity, does anybody have 
like a person or two in mind or who might take this position or who you might be looking towards, you know, like, oh, well, I know like, hey, you know, Teresa is really good with money and this person knows a lot about energy stuff, about you energy know, stuff. we're, no, but we're I, leaning, you I know, think you kind of can't with you, these you, entities. Like, you can't, but, you, you know, yes. does somebody... We really, we really, at this point, are relying on two rivers to provide right. that kind of uh, expertise and, yep. and I access have to the potential candidates. Now, the person will be housed, so to speak, at Two Rivers. Not no. housed at. No, because no, that was the 80% version right. where they yeah. take that much more. And they did say, I did talk to Peter Gregory, and I know they're bringing somebody else on half time at Two Rivers. And, um, you know, obviously Two Rivers is willing to create the position and we increase our funding to them. So, you know, everybody's got their hand out. We know how it works. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so it's a... I guess it will go back around. I mean, so do you want, let me start. Do you, we know how Gene feels. Do you want to put it on the warning as the full 22, Lindley? Okay. I'm going to have to say no. Okay. I might go for some small income. I'm just not, the numbers just keep adding and just, and I guess I'm not sold that this, this job is ready to go. So we could do, since it looks like you're going to split, the um, you're going to sign the warning at the next meeting. We could, I could bring a version of the warning with out this on it. And then I could bring another version of the warning with this on it. And if you end up changing the amounts, that's fine. You would just have to come by the office to sign the warning. You can make a motion to approve the amended warning, but then you all are going to have to make a conscious effort of coming to the office, at least three of you to get it signed. So you could, since you're going to split, you could table the discussion until, although he's not going to be here next time either. <laughs> Unless there's a snowstorm. Actually, no, that's not true. No, he's going no, to come here later. That's right. He he's going to be here next time because he the girls be. are, I'm sorry, to, Chris is a coach's basketball. So he's coaching a game tonight. Tonight, tomorrow, on um, the following Monday, he's playing in Randolph. He was going to ask some other coaches to ride the bus home. So he thought he could be here by 630. So we could come up with a couple different, um, I could bring one warning without it, one warning with it. And then you guys could, you know, Negotiate or a number or add that on or whatever. Is that okay, seem, so is got, everybody reasonable or okay with that idea? Okay. <laughs> I meant to say agree. Does everybody agree with that idea? Go along. I, with that. I'm yeah. I'm gives you more time to think about it. Gives you two weeks to think about what you. Can we want. table the vote until? Versus here, yeah, so that's what, yeah, yeah. Have two versions, so you, and we'll right. vote. Uh, since the warning, what well, tonight was just a discussion only. Okay, we realize that you're not in agreement, so it gives you two weeks to think about. Okay, maybe I am willing to do this, but I'm either willing to do it for the full twenty-two or I'm not. But it will give you a chance to get a number in mind, so that if you're gonna try to come to a consensus or negotiate it okay, next so time, what's, what's the possibility of uh, getting more i mean since the last meeting we had the town drop out mm -hmm. i mean by next meeting maybe we're going to have more dropouts or can we ask <laughs> right yeah but, uh, but the, the other question is if, if we drop out it's going to be a moot point right because you're the so it is so will you other towns will have had select board meetings so will you be able to report back to the Royal meeting tonight? I mean, it's. Um... So I guess I'm asking is, will you be able to check in with these other towns and let me know <clears throat> like the Wednesday, you know, like as soon as you find out, if you just email me, so-and-so dropped out, so-and-so's in, then I can keep a tab of where we're at. Well, or Scott can. You see, if they're not going to put on the warning, they've dropped out, basically. Yeah. 
although there are conversations in a couple of towns about a citizen petition to put it out. Yeah, so but they would they have to get their petition out and then That's right. they have to and I'm not sure. That's a tough one, Gene, because the a petition to the select board has to be for an article in which the um voters have the authority to vote on. So I'm not sure a lawyer would say that that would they could force them to go. Most select boards will do it because someone's petitioned, but there is the the area that a select board does not have to put everything on. I, but you know what I mean. I will not have there will we won't know okay. until the warnings have been published. Yeah. Whether or not towns are gonna have the on or not. Yeah. It's because I think you have to have your petitions in. You have to have your petitions in before next Monday, before the Monday of our next select board meeting, because that's why we're going to approve the warning when we're there. So, um, but I can also, um, I could email Victoria at Royalton and find out. Peter, you say there's not mm -hmm. on this list that you think there's a citizen petition. No, 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 okay, no. It's not just this one. list. That's, okay, great. That's what I'm trying to yes. There is there there are two that are. Have already been talking to people yeah. in addition to the select board about getting a warning onto the town meeting. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So, whether it's through, with the select board's approval or through citizen participation, we'll still know before next Monday because people so will have to have had them in. So, we can find out. We may not know till we get here, but I can find out. All right. Well, it sounds like you're just gonna, We're going to hold table. off, table it. So, um, and it was just a discussion on it anyway. So, all right. So, um, tell me report if you got, how yep, are you doing with we that? We covered that. We're good. We're good. Okay, um, select board minutes of 12, 18. I have two edits for that, two corrections. Um, under uh, public comment, uh, Samantha Godin had said, uh, she asked about the increase in salaries, if there was a budget across the board, and uh, so I, going to add the words or just the DPW and town manager question mark. Therese said yes, 4% across the board, but she will double check her spreadsheet formulas. So, and I, I didn't say it in here, but obviously I thanked her for pointing that out. Um, then the other change also under, we talked, I gave an update on the flooding issue and I, I stated um, class three portion or class four portion of upper Gilead is closed. It, it technically is a class three. It's just classified by the state as not up to standard. So I changed that from a class four to class three and then put in parenthesis classified by state is not up to standard. So by state standards, they're considering it a four as we don't get money for it. So I wanna make those two edits to the meeting minute. Any other adjustments, edits? Entertain, entertain a motion to you the minutes as edited. Second. In favor? Aye. Other communications. I think that you had planning commission minutes. Yep, meeting minutes you did. And um, at the December 2023 financials are in here. And letter me, or not me, so, um, Oh, I think that was it. That's good. I that was that's all. It. I see. Any other business necessary to come before the board? Yes. Person next meeting as best as I can. Oh yeah, and you. my class goes till five, so and then it's about an hour drive, so I might just be a couple minutes late. Well, you know, if Chris is going to not be here until six thirty, 
would it would you like to do the meeting at 6 30 would that give you a little extra time to get here so you're less I don't want to see you going 90 from him. You know? No, I'm, I'm not going to go. No, I am late. I'm one of the pace setters. And I, I had a couple of Vermonters pass me on every 100 today. And I said, yeah, I'm fine going with the speed I'm going. Hey, I had someone pass me on Christian Hill when it was all dirt. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, you know what that's about. Yeah, those people, well, it was before when it was dirt. And before it was pavement. pavement. Oh, oh, yeah. You know, it was before it was paved. Not, not that I think it's wrong, but I think, you know, changing meeting times. I know it's tough. It gets tricky for other people who are trying to attend. It does. I don't mind it being the same. I'm just letting you guys know that I might be fine. Okay. Well, we'll put that on the end of the warning anyways, or on the end of the agenda. So <clears throat> that's fine. I just want to make sure you were yeah. here safely. So I guess I would. Motion to adjourn? Yeah. So moved. Okay. Second. Third. Have a good night. Mm -hmm. All in favor. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody.